Have you ever looked at one of your food photos, specifically one that you shot overhead, and you thought, you know, that just like lacks some three-dimensional quality, it feels a little flat, lacks depth? Well, chances are it's not your camera, it's not your lens, it's your lighting. And specifically, especially if you're working at home, has something to do with the environment where you're shooting. And so today I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite hacks for lighting that helps just add some punch and some pop to those overhead shots without spending a lot of money. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. Like I mentioned, today we're diving in to a lighting hack. I know you love lighting, so I'm excited to share this one with you. It's a long time coming. I feel like this is something I've been doing for years and I'm like, ah, how have I not done a video on this? But before we jump into that, I am excited to share with you that today's video is sponsored by the PPA, the Professional Photographers of America. The PPA was created by photographers for photographers. I've been a member for over two years now, and I first joined because membership includes $15,000 worth of equipment insurance, which is pretty self-explanatory, but incredibly valuable if you're running your own business, because let's face it, camera gear is expensive. But it's not just insurance. No other organization packages so many benefits into one low price. Now, one of the things that's new that I know you're gonna love is their new educational platform, which includes 24 seven on-demand library of photography classes covering things like artist mindset, business marketing and strategy, video photography foundations, and much, much more. Over 900 plus hours of education from over 150 professional photographers. They also have sales and marketing resources for you to use in your business, like brochure and promo templates and eBooks and tons of discounts from retailers like B&H, Apple, Dell, Photo Labs, and more. And then of course, I don't want you to miss out on Imaging USA, which is the PPA's annual event, the world's largest photography convention and expo. In 2021, it's all virtual. You can experience its three days of live education, on-demand classes right from where you are. It's the same energy of an in-person event brought to you in a whole new way. So mark your calendar January 17th through 19th for Imaging USA right at home. And then be sure to follow my link in the description box below for more information about membership and a special discount if you join now. So whether you are just beginning and want to start out on the right foot or you've been at this a while but you want to take your business to the next level, the PPA is where you need to be. All right, so now let's jump into the lighting. But before we get there, I just want to walk you through some of the creative decisions that went into making this photo because what happened was it was just Sunday afternoon and making a pot of soup for dinner and I was like, you know, pot of soup, that'd be something fun to photograph. I haven't shot a soup in a while and it's just like, I mean, it's coming into winter here in Arizona. So, you know, it's like a frigid 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But I thought, you know, I just really want something that evokes those warm and cozy winter vibes. So that's why you'll see in this image, there's a lot of browns, there's a lot of warm tones, there's a little bit of moody action going on. And so where I started in terms of picking the props, I knew that I needed a bowl, obviously for soup. And so I went with this one that I've recently bought from Crate and Barrel. I bought the whole set of these. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen these in other food photos, like the plates from this set. They're just really nice because they've got kind of this cream tone to them but that little speckled effect is just like the perfect little nuance of texture to add some interest without distracting from our food so then next it's all about the background that's going to go with that bowl right just in thinking of building the colors and building the textures and sort of really honing in that cozy vibe so i wanted something with a warmer tone and actually ended up with this brown background which i have not shot with before but i think it really works here in this image this one's from jippy fondo it is a painted canvas. So definitely different from a lot of the others that I have. They sent this to me. I really like it. I think it's got a lot of character. It kind of reminds me though too of a placemat because it's got that fabric texture to it. Thinking about home cooking really fits with the story. And then the napkin there in the lower corner, that one is one of my favorites. It's from Caravan Linens. I'm going to tell you, I mean, I've got a link down below. They're not cheap napkins. They're kind of crazy expensive in, in my opinion, but they are beautiful napkins. Like in terms terms of the texture and the quality of 
the weave. Like it just adds so much when, when your props have that authenticity factor and have that unique texture that it's just, it, it can really set things off. So one of my favorite napkins, they also really lay nicely so that as you fold them over, they just kind of like fall into place, which is, you know, what we all need in life is for our napkins just to fall into place, right? And then I've got a little pinch bowl there in the corner. I put some of the little like seasoning in there. You can't even really see it, but to me, it just like, it's a little hint of something interesting. And that one's from Notary Ceramics. Now there was one other prop that was in the scene that you can't actually see in the image directly, but you can see its shadow. That is something that I really like to add into food photos is props outside the periphery that cast a shadow just to, you know, create sort of a vignette effect and also lead us to understand that there are other things outside the frame that we're not even seeing that are casting shadows into that scene. It just, again, kind of breaks things up, makes it a little bit more exciting, that shadow play. And so I've got a bowl then just kind of positioned there in the upper left corner. Oh, and last but not least, the spoon, the very important spoon. I found that one at an antique store in California. I've got a whole set of them. That was a major score. They've got some great patina on on them. I wouldn't actually eat off those spoons, but <laughs> they look great in photos. So once I had the props picked and I had staged the setup, I knew what I was going for in terms of the layout, where everything was going to go. Then it's just a matter of putting the food in the bowl and styling it. And you can see one of the things to pay attention to in terms of this soup. And we've got sort of those, you know, chicken and sausage and all these interesting bits that are in it. And so taking the opportunity to sort of pile those up in the center. And also I know this might sound like Joni you're being ridiculous but <laughs> composing that in sort of a diagonal across the bowl because if you start to look in terms of the composition of this image I have a lot of diagonals going from that upper left to that lower right and that is definitely just like my preferred diagonal if you look at a lot of my images like it's my go-to I should really force myself outside of that and start composing on the opposite diagonal but it's fine it's it's what I do and so you can see you know that chicken sort of follows this little S curve that's also though following that diagonal, that primary diagonal from the upper left to the lower right. And then other really important thing in terms of those scallions, those green onions, you can see that I've sliced those really, really thin. And I love to do that with green onions because I think that, you know, there are certain applications where it makes sense to kind of chop them rougher in larger pieces. But in this situation and in a lot of situations when it comes to garnish, it just looks prettier, it looks more interesting there's more visual variety when we really take the time, use our proper knife skills to get those really nice and slender and thin so that it just adds like that little kind of, I don't know, like fairy dust on top of your soup. So now we're on to the all important topic of lighting. And today I'm shooting with artificial lighting, which I do most of the time here in the studio. Now, certainly the trick that I'm going to share with you can apply whether you're using flash based, continuous or natural light, like the, the hack applies across the board so don't just say oh she's using artificial light and I shoot natural I gotta leave no 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 this is for everybody but I do want to walk you through my lighting just to help those of you who are shooting artificial to understand the decisions that I've made so you can see that I have got my Godox AD600 Pro mono light it's a strobe you can do this though with a speed light or an LED light what have you but I've got that position behind the Roscoe diffusion material and if you've got questions about that I've got it linked down below you know you can mount this to frames you can do all sorts of things with this diffusion material. Personally, I just suspend it off of the C-stand and <laughs> call it a day. But one of the things I do want you to notice is that on that flash head, I have a seven inch reflector, which is helping just to prevent the light from spilling out all over the space. It's really helping to direct it straight onto that diffusion material. And then two, I've selected to put that light relatively close to that diffusion material because in essence, what that's doing is creating sort of this hot spot on our diffusion material, which is lending towards some moodier vibe in the scene, right? Because a smaller light source gives us kind of stronger, more intense shadows. And, you know, just in thinking about this scene and the mood that I wanted to evoke, it's sort of like maybe eating this, you know, by a fireplace or at the end of the day, as the sun is lower in the sky, creating some longer shadows. So that was the kind of mood I was going for. So that's how I decided where to place that light relative to that diffusion material. And then two, this was also very intentional. You know, any image that I've created, there are a lot of very intentional decisions that you're like, 
was she thinking about that? In this case, yes, I was. I was very intentional to place that light coming in from that upper left side of the scene so that it casted downward that bowl that's just outside the scene. It's creating sort of that diagonal and mirroring those diagonals that I already have in the composition of the image so that my lighting helps to support the composition that I've created by placing all of my props. So I'm loving the props, loving the food styling. I go ahead and I take a test shot and I look at the image and I go, it's good, but it could be better. Like I really, I want some oomph. I want that three dimensional feel. This feels a little flat to me. And granted, I could go in and edit it and really pump up the contrast or bring in the shadows. You know, those are all definitely things at my disposal, but I like to do things in camera as much as possible because I think it just starts me out with a better baseline image. And two, that I know that light is behaving in a natural sort of way that sometimes when we do a lot in post-processing to manipulate a photo, it becomes less and less believable and less and less real because real light behaves in very specific ways. So if given the opportunity and there's a simple solution to add more depth to our image and really tweak the lighting, I like to do that in camera when I can. And so in this case, what I know is that I've got sort of this feeling of flatness and there is a good chance that it has something to do with the fact that I am shooting in a room in my home with sort of standard ceiling height with white walls and a white ceiling. And what do we know about white surfaces? Well, they bounce light into our scene, right? So the light is coming through that Roscoe diffusion material landing in our scene, but it's also bouncing off the white ceiling. It's bouncing off the white walls. Well, how can we minimize that? By using some negative fill. So that's where we bust out our black foam core. And I I absolutely have to recommend if you've not bought some black foam core, which is effectively just black poster board, you can get it at the craft store. But what I've done then is I have placed that black foam core above the scene. So it's not blocking the light, but what it's doing is it's blocking the light bouncing up from the ceiling. So I place that over top of the camera, which I've done this before on Instagram, you know, shown behind the scenes and people are like, what the heck are you doing putting that foam board like on your camera? It looks wacky, it looks crazy. But now you can see after doing that, the before without the foam core and now boom with it. Holy moly, like I literally, that was all I did was add that black foam core and you can see just how it's accentuated the shadows. It's really created some interesting contrast. I mean, it's not wildly different, but it's just enough to really add that three dimensional quality and visual interest to take this from a good image to a much better image. Although let me throw a caveat on with that because that is a kind of a matter of personal taste, right? Like I personally prefer the deeper shadows, the little bit more of contrast. Like that is just something that I personally appreciate and is more pleasing to my eye. That said, plenty of people out there will prefer the first image and kind of like that additional fill light that you're getting from white bounce cards or white fill cards. Like that's great too. So I don't wanna tell you like you have to do it this way or that way, but I just want you to know that if you're running into a situation where you're looking at your image and you're like, oh, I just wanna add some depth, I'm gonna recommend you throw a black foam board in there and just see what happens. Just see what happens, see if you like it better. Now, one of the areas to me too that makes a specific difference in this image is you can see just on that inner lip of the bowl on the upper left corner like it just really cinches things in so that we get a much more interesting contrast from the bowl into the soup it just to me it just really draws the eye further in it also accentuates the texture that's on the chicken we can just really get kind of a sense of richness that I was personally going for in this image so now hopefully with that tip in mind your upcoming photo shoots you can just at least be much more aware of the environment that you're shooting and how it's affecting your images, ways that you can manipulate that scene to create the images that you want to create. So with that, I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. All right. Bye.